Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, today, we're going to discuss the fundamental but often overlooked component of electrical systems, the electrical insulators. Please, if you are new to my YouTube channel, support the channel by liking and hitting the subscription button to get notified whenever I post important tutorial like this. Have you ever wondered how electricity flows safely without causing sparks or short-circuiting? Well, the secret lies in something we often overlook, the electrical insulators. Stay tuned, because by the end of this video, you will understand the followings. 1. What is electrical insulator? 2. What properties makes them insulators? 3. Types of electrical insulators. 4. Why insulators are important. 5. Why high tension lines should not touch ground. 6. What happened when conductor is very close to electrical supports like tower. Now watch this. Welcome back let's get started. What is electrical insulator? Electrical insulators simply means materials that resist the flow of electric current through them. They're like the bounces at a nightclub, keeping unwanted guests out. Insulators ensure that electricity only flows where it's supposed to. Materials such as rubber, glass, and ceramics are excellent insulators because they have high resistance to electrical conduction. This property is essential in safeguarding both people and equipment from the hazards of electricity. In the early days of electricity, direct current transmission reigns, but because of its limited capacity to transmit power to far distances, it became obsolete after the discovery of alternating current AC. As AC emerges and overshadow DC, Power can now transmit to very far distances with high voltages through the help of transformers. But because of this dangerous high voltage that accompanies it, the need for insulation becomes extremely important for direction of current and ensure safety. In overhead line construction, conductors mount on poles or towers in a manner that prevents current from flowing to the ground through the supports meaning that proper insulation between the conductors and their supports is essential. This is accomplished by attaching the conductors to the supports using insulators. These insulators create the necessary separation, ensuring that no leakage current passes from the conductors to the ground. As we have now understood what insulators are, what properties or features must these materials possess so that they will be called good insulators? Generally, for insulators to withstand this high voltage especially in transmission lines, the insulators should possess the following key characteristics. 1. High mechanical strength to withstand the load from the conductors, wind forces, etc. 2. High electrical resistance to minimize leakage current to the ground. 3. High relative permittivity to ensure strong dielectric properties. 4. The insulator material must be non-porous and free of defects such as cracks and impurities, as these can reduce permittivity. Let's look into the different types of insulators. In electrical engineering, Insulator types are classified into different ways like 1. Voltage levels. Here we have low voltage type and high voltage type insulators. 2. Material. Here we have them as ceramic type insulators, glass type insulators and polymer type insulators. 3. Functional and configuration. Here we have pin type, suspension type, strain insulators, and shackle insulators. In these classifications, number three is the best accepted way to classify insulator types, and because of that let us dwell in it, which says function and configuration. Let's explain each insulator one after the other. 1. Pin type insulators. These insulators, as implied by their name, 
They're attached to the cross arm on the pole. They have a groove at their upper end for holding the conductor. The conductor is tied in the groove with an annealed wire made of the same material as the conductor. Pin type insulators are suitable for electric power transmission and distribution at voltages up to 33 kV, but they become expensive and uneconomical for voltage above 33 kV. 2. Suspension type insulators. The cost of pin type insulators escalates with increasing voltage, making them impractical above 33 kV. For higher voltages, Suspension type insulators are typically employed. These consist of a series of porcelain discs linked by metal connectors to form a string. The conductor hangs from the bottom of this string, while the top is anchored to the tower's cross arm. Each disc is rated for lower voltages, typically around 11 kV, so the number of discs used depends on the system voltage. For example, Six discs would be needed for a working voltage of 66 kV. But what are the benefits of suspension type insulators? A. Uh, more cost effective than pin type insulators for voltages over 33 kV. B. Each disc is rated for lower voltage, allowing for a configurable series connection based on the system's voltage requirements. C. If one disc fails, it can be replaced without rendering the entire assembly useless. D. The suspension setup offers increased flexibility in the line, allowing for movement that minimizes mechanical stress. E. When demand on the transmission line increases, adding discs to accommodate a higher line voltage is often more efficient than adding more conductors. F. Suspension insulators work well with steel towers, providing some protection against lightning strikes as conductors are below the grounded cross arm. 3. Strain insulators. These are utilized at dead ends of lines or sharp curves due to the increased tension, which they help alleviate. Low voltage lines generally use shackle insulators in this role, while high voltage lines require an assembly of suspension insulators arranged vertically. In cases of exceptionally high tension, particularly in long spans, multiple strings of insulators are deployed in parallel. 4. Shackle insulators. Originally used as strain insulators because of impact of stress it experienced as those of strain insulators, Shackle insulators are now primarily found in low voltage distribution lines. They can be mounted either horizontally or vertically and can be affixed directly to poles or cross arms with bolts. Shackle insulators consist of a ceramic or glass insulator body with strap metal attached to it. The shackle is typically made of a durable metal alloy, such as steel or aluminum, and is designed to securely hold the conductor in place. 5. Stay insulators. Stay insulators are devices used to support and stabilize overhead power lines, particularly in the case of structures like poles and towers. They are typically employed to balance tensional forces on the electrical pole or tower. Stay insulators are used to provide electrical insulation between the stay cable and the structure it is attached to. This insulation prevents electrical current from flowing through the stay cable to ground. They often have a distinctive shape, ensuring they can withstand mechanical stresses while providing the necessary insulation. 6. Post insulators. Post insulators are vertical insulators that are used to support electrical conductors and provide electrical isolation between the conductors and the supporting structure, such as a substation or a transmission tower. Post insulators are primarily designed to support high voltage conductors and to insulate them from the ground or supporting structures. They provide both mechanical strength and electrical insulation. They are commonly used in substations and distribution networks to support bus bars and other conductors at various voltage levels. 
Their application is essential where the conductor needs to be isolated from the ground or supporting structures to prevent short circuiting. Post insulators often come in a cylindrical shapes. Now, let's talk about where these insulators come into play in power systems and why they are important. 1. Transmission lines. High voltage insulators are crucial in supporting and isolating conductors in overhead power lines. They prevent the conductors from making contact with the ground or structures, avoiding short circuits and ensuring electricity flows efficiently over long distances. 2. Substations. Inside substations, you'll find a variety of insulators used in circuit breakers and transformers. These insulators maintain safe distances between electrical components, ensuring that high voltages don't inadvertently transfer to the structural elements, which could lead to dangerous failures. 3. Distribution networks. Low voltage insulators are used extensively in distribution networks, particularly in residential areas. They help keep the wiring safe and secure, protecting both the electricity flowing into homes and the people living there. 4. Safety and protection. By preventing unwanted current leakage and electrical shorts, insulators are essential for the safety of electrical systems. They help prevent accidents, equipment damage, and fire hazards, making them vital guardian in our daily lives. Electrical insulators are the unsung heroes of the electrical world, making sure that current flows safely and effectively from one place to another. Third question, why high tension lines should not touch the ground? Have you also noticed that all bare conductors of distribution lines, transmission lines and ones at the power stations are all on suspicion? High tension lines should not touch the ground because contact with the ground cause line to ground faults, which can cause serious safety hazards. If these lines were to touch the ground, they would create a short circuit, leading to excessive current flow that can result in electrical fires, equipment damage, or even injuries to people or animals nearby. Last question, why is that in high voltage transmission lines? conductors are placed far from the support structure. At high voltage, the air molecules surrounding conductors become ionized, compromising the insulation properties of the air. This breakdown can cause the air molecules to conduct electricity, leading to a discharge to ground through nearby support structures. Let's take a closer look at this phenomenon. From this brief video you have seen what actually happened when a conductor is close to supporting structure. This cause line to ground fault which can lead to burning of equipment. It is always preferable to place conductors away from supporting structure, especially steel structures. If you enjoyed this deep dive into electrical insulators, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more awesome content. And as always, feel free to leave your questions or thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, bye.